it is enough of honor for one lifetime to have known you better than the rest have known the shadows and colors of your voice your will immutable and still as stone the beloved by Sarah Teasdale and Barbara C Langer wrote in the symphony of life the heart is the conductor beating the rhythm of the life force and the melody the voice of the divine hello once again I'm Don Jackson and welcome to the heartbeat of the internet some voices we can never forget Tennyson remembered one but oh for the touch of a vanished hand and the sound of a voice that is still even years later we can still remember the touch of someone's hand and the sound of their voice our voices are unique just as no two sets of fingerprints are alike we can mimic another's voice but it's a fake we can disguise our own but we can't keep it up forever and yet there is some quality of the human voice that mirrors all others Khalil Gibran wrote and should you open your ears and listen you would hear your own voice in all voices it's welcome and comforting especially if it's a familiar voice Percy Shelley wrote all love is sweet given or returned common as light is love and its familiar voice wearies not ever during the course of this webcast I will be highlighting some singers with very powerful unique and unusual voices Antoine de Saint Exupéry spoke a truth about adults when he wrote grown-ups love figures when you tell them that you have made a new friend they never ask you any questions about essential matters they never say to you what does his voice sound like what games does he love best does he collect butterflies instead they demand how old is he how many brothers has he how much does he weigh how much money does his father make only from these figures do they think they have learned anything about him but some adults do listen carefully there are so many qualities to the human voice some are clear and musical Paul Verlaine described one voice in particular her voice is grave and calm and is withdrawn like those of dear ones gone beyond the born Thomas Hardy in the return of the native said that Eustacia Vise had a musical quality her voice the viola Lauren Bacall had a very husky voice that added a little something extra to all her interactions in the movies with Humphrey Bogart and it's not just the female voice author Ray Sippard once had a chance to interview Alfred Hitchcock he said that Hitchcock had an oracle like voice the great author of whodunits Agatha Christie had her own views about love she wrote the first sight of him did something to her twisted her heart round so that it almost hurt absurd that a man an ordinary yes perfectly ordinary young man should be able to do that to one that the mere look of him should set the world spinning that his voice should make you want just a little to cry love surely should be a pleasurable emotion not one that hurts you with its intensity the words of Agatha Christie one of the most famous movie lines would have to be the one spoken by Clark Gable my dear I don't give a damn William Hazlitt wrote in her sight there was Elysium her smile was heaven her voice was enchantment the air of love waved round her breathing balm into my heart Edgar Allan Poe in the haunted palace listened to a chorus of voices and all with pearl and ruby glowing was the fair palace door through which came flowing 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 
and sparkling evermore, a troop of echoes whose sweet duty was but to sing in voices of surpassing beauty the wit and wisdom of their king. Antonio Machado E. Ruiz, in portrait translated by Robert Bly, wrote, I dislike hollow tenors who warble of love and the chorus of crickets singing to the moon. I fall silent so as to separate voices from echoes, and I will listen among the voices to one voice and only one. Which leads me to this. Milton in Paradise Lost wrote, the angel ended, and in Adam's ear so charming left his voice, that he a while thought him still speaking, still stood fixed to hear. One can only imagine the mysterious power of an angel's voice to captivate and charm. William Shakespeare, in Love's Labor Lost, wrote, And when love speaks, the voice of all the gods makes heaven drowsy with the harmony. No wonder mere mortals feel dumbstruck when they try to find the words to express their love. Never at a loss for words, Shakespeare had the solution if you feel the need to express the love that swells your heart. He wrote in Much Ado About Nothing, Speak low if you speak love. The best way to ensure that someone is listening to what you have to say is to speak softly. The best way to ensure that nobody hears is to yell at them. Nothing will tune out your audience as effectively as raising your voice to a shriek. But that's not half as bad as those who refuse to listen to themselves. They know what's wrong what needs to be done, and yet they just won't listen to their own better sense. Richard Garnett wrote, Sweet are the words of love, sweeter his thoughts, sweetest of all what love nor says nor thinks. You may think silence rules the darkness, but it is really just a cover for all the sounds that fill the night. Sit and listen long enough, and you will eventually hear beyond the silence. Sometimes the only voice one hears in the night is one's own echoing in an empty room. We have given a voice to so many things and provided so many jobs for voice actors. Our GPS has a soothing male or female voice to guide us along on a road trip. Our video games speak to us in many voices. The iPhone has a feature called Siri. In one of the Big Bang Theory episodes, Raj begins a relationship with Siri after constantly failing to find a relationship of his own in the real world. Speaking of which, it's been said that in the very near future, computers could mimic human voices so precisely that we may have to worry about a new kind of terrorism. There is already speech recognition software that allows you to speak to your computer. Mel Blanc was one of the best cartoon voice actors. He made us believe in a talking rabbit and a cat that slurred. He literally was a man of a thousand voices. This is a true story. It was featured in the May 30th, 2008 issue of the Globe and Mail's Social Studies column, and I quote, In 1961, Mel Blanc was seriously injured in a head-on car accident. He lingered in a coma for almost three weeks. His surgeon had the bright idea of saying, Hey, Bugs Bunny, how are you? The actor responded, All previous attempts to get a response failed. An anonymous Chinese writer in the 10th century wrote, Watching alone by the ancient city wall, thinking of one who was too beautiful, what did I see? 
What did I hear? Moonlight quivering over empty courtyards. A voice calling out of the midnight shadows. One name, her name, echoes across the silence. Light feet, her feet, in shoes of peacock feathers, dance through the empty halls. Will they never rest? Thinking of joys that ended and sorrows which never end, I find my white robe spangled with tears for her. E.E. E. Garnett found a voice in one of the strangest places, but you and I have heard it as well. And I quote, Even if you sit by the fireside, solitary, you are not alone. There are faces that smile out of the dancing flames, charmed into view by the magic of the chimney corner. There are voices that whisper as the embers fall, end quote. We need to pay attention to the secret inner voice that is our intuition. Voices from a place deep in our memories can be insistent, but even more insistent is another little voice. It can be quite nagging. Abraham Joshua Heschel was quoted as saying, The conscience is a break, not a guide, a fence, not a way. It raises its voice after a wrong deed has been committed, but often fails to give us direction in advance of our actions. You can learn a lot from a single voice in a crowd, as well as many. In the private time column of the August 1986 issue of Glamour magazine was this. Situate yourself in a crowded spot, a busy sidewalk, for instance. Without trying to decipher what people are saying, listen to the rhythms of speech, the blend of deep and shrill voices, the medley of laughs, end quote. There are voices all around us every day, perhaps even in the most remote regions of space. There is a Star Trek The Next Generation episode that is based on the dangers of one very small voice. As the ship is passing near to a star system, the android Data picks up a message from a little creature on a faraway world. A little voice comes blazing across the interstellar distances. Is there anybody out there? The android makes the mistake of replying, and the rest of the episode deals with the crew trying to undo the damage he created by his simple response. Their mandate is not to interfere with civilizations that have yet to acquire technology to travel between the stars for fear of contamination. So, they have to erase the memories of the little female creature, so she forgets that someone responded to her pathetic call, all because of the answer to a lonely voice in the long interstellar night. It may explain why we might never hear a reply to our messages sent out to the stars. Tashibana Akima from Happiness Is When, translated by Burton Watson, said, Happiness is when you're sick of reading a book, and just then, someone with a familiar voice knocks at your gate. Do you sometimes hear voices inside your head? If you say yes, you have to be careful who you admit that to, because they might look at you strange and wonder if you should be locked up. It's not about those poor souls you see in large urban cities who carry on loud conversations with themselves when there's no one else around. Their silent voices come to taunt them. I wouldn't be surprised if you said that you can sometimes hear the sound of someone's voice from out of your past if you're thinking about him or her. The tone of his or her voice and the way that person spoke will probably never fade from your memory. But there are times when you're liable to hear voices you wished would stay lost. It's those voices we contend with at times. 
Hilaire Belon wrote, I said to Hart, how goes it? Hart replied, right as a ribstone pippin. But it lied. I've wondered what it must be like near the end of one's life. Do some voices become more insistent? Looking back over a life well lived or a voice that is being cut short in one's prime, do we ruminate on all the decisions we made? Do we argue with ourselves about missed opportunities? The people we lost touch with, those we left, and ones who left us. If there ever is a time when a person wonders, what if, then this must be when it occurs the most. It doesn't matter whether the voice yells or whispers softly, this must be the most nagging of them all. This would be the one you wish you could find the off switch for. No matter how hard you try, it still begs the answer to the question, what if? E. E. Cummings wrote, I do not know what it is about you that closes and opens. Only something in me understands the voice of your eyes is deeper than all roses. In 2007, the Daily Telegraph reported an interesting finding from research done in Africa as well as research done on this side of the Atlantic. Men with lower-pitched voices have more children than do men with high-pitched voices. They knew this from earlier research, and I quote, Women find deeper male voices to be more attractive. They judge them to be dominant, older, healthier, and more masculine-sounding. And women are particularly drawn to a booming drawl when they are at the peak of fertility. End quote. This is simply called Love by Pablo Neruda. Because of you, in gardens of blossoming flowers, I ache from the perfumes of spring. I have forgotten your face. I no longer remember your hands. How did your lips feel on mine? Because of you, I love the white statues drowsing in the parks. The white statues that have neither voice nor sight. I have forgotten your voice, your happy voice. I have forgotten your eyes. Like a flower to its perfume, I am bound to my vague memory of you. I live with pain that is like a wound. If you touch me, you will do me irreparable harm. Your caresses enfold me like climbing vines on melancholy walls. I have forgotten your love, yet I seem to glimpse you in every window. Because of you, the heady perfumes of summer pain me. Because of you, I again seek out the signs that precipitate desires, shooting stars, falling objects. The most nagging voices that badger you are usually the ones that are no louder than a whisper. It's the quiet ones that speak the loudest. In life, we tune people out who yell. When anger rises to the surface, the volume gets turned up. The person doing the yelling feels he's getting his message across loud and clear. In truth, the other person is trying hard not to listen. This is called the tone of voice, and I quote, It is not so much what you say as the manner in which you say it. It is not so much the language you use as the tone in which you convey it. Words may be mild and fair, but the tone may pierce like a dart. Words may be soft as the summer air, but the tone may break my heart. For words come from the mind, grow by study and art, but tone leaps from the inner self, revealing the state of the heart. Whether you know it or not, whether you mean it or care, gentleness 
kindness, love and hate, envy, anger are there. Then will you quarrels avoid and peace and love rejoice. Keep anger not only out of your words, keep it out of your voice. Jacqueline Marie Griffiths wrote, The strength of a man isn't in the deep tone of his voice. It is in the gentle words he whispers. Leroy Brownlow from Today is Mine wrote, There are times when silence has the loudest voice 